We're going to show you three different amazing saxophones today. They're unseen ever, and that will be, say, the best of the range of the year, which is the Shago saxophone range. Now, everyone think about Shago, they think they only make brass instrument like a trumpet and euphonium, but they, what they don't know is this year they start to produce a range of uh, professional or advanced at intermediate level of the saxophone. Today we're going to show you three of them. So this is the Superior Pro model um, and then we have the Superior Vintage model which is great also and then the Model 66 which is um, the unlacquered brass. All of them sound and feel great. Um, the ergonomics across all of them are, are fantastic. But I think just in terms of the, the tonal difference, uh, this is probably the, the brighter one. And to be honest, it, it would be just a, a, a really personal selection. So some people like a brighter sound, some people like a mid-range, and some people like a darker range. I tend to like the darker range, um, you know, inspired by John Coltrane, Joe Henderson, that, that kind of tonal quality. So maybe I should just play a little bit on this one. So a beautiful kind of open, free sound. Uh, it's, it's rich. Um, I, I find these horns, I mean, the modern horns, can be, uh, they look good, but they don't necessarily sound good. So it, it's a great treat to play a range that is a positive experience. So for, for me, it's, it's a pleasure to play the three of them. Um, as I said earlier, the, the ergonomics of the instrument is, um, is really good and it feels really natural under the fingers. And, and these are actually straight out of the box. So they haven't been um, adjusted at all. So it's a testament to the design of the Shagul range, I think that they obviously work straight out of the box, which is fabulous. The case actually has the wheel with that. So it actually saved a lot of, you know, for the young beginner kids, they couldn't actually carry to the school things. All the case is, is with the wheels. It's a great that's idea. That. And then that's a two wheels on that, so they can just drag it like a luggage there. Out of the three that have been trialling today, this one is probably the brighter one, which is also fine. Um, and it depends um, on the situation, uh, the musical situation as to maybe which horn you'd prefer. If you play predominantly uh, in a group that, that needs a brighter sound, maybe this is the one for you. Yeah, it speaks really well. For me, it's 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 a higher version of a good tone, you know, like higher as in brighter, not pitch. Yeah, I also like this one. Maybe I just take all of them home. I think. So next one we're going to show you is Superior series on the vintage and lacquer finish. So the Superior range of the tenor saxophone, they all comes in uh, unlacquered or vintage unlacquered series. And also with the F sharp key, um, the differences between the um, model 66 and the superior, it's obviously we can see the double arms um, design over there. <laughs> Thank you, John, to show you this is that. Then out of that, so F sharp key, and then it's really nice color um, keypads present with the engraving which is really smooth finish like a lot of people you know actually i'm in the shop a lot of people say oh are they used one or are, mm. are they old one like i've never seen that before well what they don't know is actually because it's unlacquer it actually provide very powerful sound out of its tenor saxophone especially on the middle range of the tone mm. it's yep. it got like nice and warm sound out of there yeah i'd agree with that um just like with the first superior pro model this particular version is also free blowing and and very resonant but in in, in terms of the the tonal aesthetic it is uh slightly darker although down the bottom it, it still has the bright element to it in the mid-range say from g to g 
it's it's quite rich and warm and and got that slightly darker tinge to the tone, which I, I like a lot. Aesthetically, I mean, it looks great, and it yeah. looks it looks like you know any sort of vintage horn that you would see on the market. Um, so in in that way, they, they've really captured the essence of of the, um, the the visual aesthetic of the instrument, which is obviously really appealing, and especially to a professional, I would say, who wants that look. I think a lot of people trying to do the to rectify that the vintage home series in any other labels that you can see on the market. For this is it's absolutely the outstanding choice. You trying to chasing a vintage sexy dark mellow ish tonal and um, this unlacquered roll brass did brings out the quality of that side of the sound compared to um, the other lacquer so I think this is um, lacquer and unlacquers the most differences between those two is the brightness so this is the uh, Shargle model again uh, superior vintage um, looks great sounds great this is probably the, the mid-range um, in terms of darkness. I, I like to talk in terms of darkness rather than brightness. For me, the connotation is um, varying levels of, of resonance. So it has elements of bright in there, um, but the darker tinge is what I'm looking for. So you'll still get the speaking quality, um, but with the, the nice vintage uh, tonal aesthetic. Yeah, especially in that part of the the instrument sounds really really rich. Yeah, I like that one because it's from where I'm standing it blows out nice and freely, but it gives me the nice sort of rich dark um, element that I'm after. Similar to the one that I played before, the, the Model 66. Although, uh, it's slightly brighter down the bottom end, so. That, that's also nice for me. Um, it's hard, it's hard. Actually, I'm finding this really difficult because all of them uh, feel and sound great. It's just a slight difference from an aesthetic, uh, tonal aesthetic for me. Yeah, I like this one too. Maybe I'll take this one and the other one home. D model 66. The, the finish on this, stock standard brass finish without the lacquer. So we call this raw brass, right? Raw brass, yeah. Raw brass. And then the Model 66 actually is trying to replicate the vintage um, side, like very 1970 or 1960s. Or even know, earlier. The, the, yeah, yeah, earlier, like a very classical um, saxophone player sounds. So during the lower range power, this is a really interesting home on the lower range of the tone because it did give like a very powerful and unique sound um, out of the three. So when you, if you are the, the people actually really care and then this is one big part of your, when you up to, when you're trying to choose your saxophone, this one, Model 66, a lower range tone, is absolutely the best out of this three. On the higher register and ergonomically, do you think what, what these are some, they all, they're all very good. That's what we kind of very difficult to try and say this is the best. But on the lower range tone, it did present a very unique tone. As I've said previously, it's, but it, it's important to, to reiterate and uh, re-establish the fact that they're all free-blowing, they resonate a lot, but what you'll find um, throughout the presentation is that you'll hear like a, a darker version of everything else that's come before. And probably out of all of them, th this would be my favourite in terms of the tonal aesthetic, because that, that's, that's what I gravitate towards. So it's got the high F-sharp key, it comes also without the high F-sharp key. What I like about this one 
is uh, like the others, it's free blowing. You'll keep hearing me say this, but it's important. As a performer, you need that ease in performance. So yeah, free blowing, um, resonant. Ergonomically, these horns are pretty well set up also. It feels good under the fingers. But for me, tonally, this one is my favorite. The others are great too, but I really gravitate towards that kind of really dark sound. Yeah, it speaks really well. It sounds nice up the top, mid-range and down the bottom. This is probably my favourite one out, out of the three. Wow. Yeah, it's got that what? kind of classic what? big yeah, sound there, yeah, yeah. which is great. I love this one. <laughs> I love all of them. I love all of them too, but I think I'll take this one home. The Model 66 is available in three different finish, which is you have... Um, on lacquer, which is called raw brass. raw brass, so it will kind of a um, matte yellow finish instead of um, yellow goose, yellow bright finish. That's called the lacquer. I uh, probably or this by this chance, I will just trying to introduce and then clarify with the, most of the customer. I said, what is antique vintage or what is on lacquer looks like? Now, so the saxophone are available in three different plating. So this is called the raw brass. So you'll see the matte finish of the yellow instead of the shiny um, yellow part of that. Um, so also available in the antique finish on lacquer, which is, you know, the people will say this is somehow looks like a second hand, but it's not. It's definitely a brand new one, but it's just a special design and plating finish in a darkish color tone. The, also, the other very uh, good choice is a traditional lacquer finish. So this just tells you the difference. First, you can see the different color between these two. So one is shiny part and one is matte finish, but it's still shining somehow. Or oh, the Model 66 tenor saxophone are available all in three, and then it has the special edition of the raw brass. In terms of um, you know the, the market that that this um, Shargal range appeals to, would, would actually probably cross from your beginner um, to mid range um, performers, actually right up to professionals, really. Professionals. Yeah, I I, I think. You know, the, the qualities there um, and the uniformity of the, the tone is there, which is really important to a performer, um, especially a professional. Um, and the price point is amazing, actually. 